Greetings, and this is an example of how to use a table method for adding forces together in a concurrent force system. So let's start with our concurrent force system and first create axes. Like this. And we will use four forces. This will be force A. And call that a thousand pounds. and it will be at a slope of three horizontal to four vertical. So the next force will be force B and we'll call that fifteen hundred pounds and and it will be at a slope of eleven vertical and six horizontal. Our third force is very creatively referred to as C, and that'll be 1,800 pounds. And its angle. will be 254 degrees with respect to the positive x-axis. And our final force will be appropriately called D. And D will be 500 pounds. And its angle will be negative 20 degrees. Again, with respect to the positive x axis. Always do everything with respect to the positive x-axis because it allows us to set things up fairly simply and then use the same formulas over and over no matter where the force is located or how it's oriented in the Cartesian plane. So we're going to set this up in a very structured format using a table. And for the table, we will have headings of the force name, the force's magnitude. In this case, it will all be in pounds. Now, we will also have the directions. Now, those directions may be in angles or in slopes. And then we will break them into x components. With units of pounds and y components.
So we'll just fill in each of these lines for each of the forces. So we have our names of A, B, C, and D. Magnitude for A is a thousand. Magnitude for B, fifteen hundred. Magnitude for C is eighteen hundred. Magnitude for D is five hundred. Direction for A, well, we have a slope here. Three, four, and its hypotenuse, of course, is five. Nice special triangle there. For B, we have something a little less easy to work with. Two things we have to remember here. First is that this is a negative 6. It is going to the left. And that makes an important difference because we will have a negative x component for B. The other thing is that we need to calculate the hypotenuse of this. Well, 11 squared is 121, negative 6 squared is 36. Add them together and you get the square root of 157 for our hypotenuse. C given as 254 degrees and D is given as negative 20 degrees. Now for our X component for A I need to use our formula. A X equals A times the horizontal over the hypotenuse. And we have 1,000 pounds times 3 over 5 yields 600 pounds. A y would be A times the vertical over the hypotenuse. thousand pounds times four fifths equals eight hundred pounds. The next one is B. B uses similar equations. Bx, B, this one is fifteen hundred pounds times negative 6 over the square root of 157 and that yields negative 718 pounds. By likewise is B times the vertical the hypotenuse and this time we're multiplying by 11 over the square root of 157. Brings us to thirteen seventeen pounds. Okay, for C, we're going to use the angled 
equations using our trigonometric functions, cosine and sine. So it's going to be c times the cosine of theta c. hundred pounds times the cosine of 254 degrees negative 496 pounds CY uses the sine function That will bring us also another negative value because C is in the third quadrant. And 1730 pounds for CY dx is going to use the same formulas, different values. So we've got d cosine theta d got 500 pounds times the cosine of negative 20 degrees. Now these formulas will work whether you use positive or negative values. Of course the negative is going clockwise and the positive is going counterclockwise. We have 470 pounds and then dy dy is negative 171.0 pounds. So now we fill these in up here. So a x is 600, a y is 800. We draw a line, in fact we'll be drawing two lines underneath this section of our chart. This is to remind us that n we cannot add any of these things up to make our resultant, but we can do that here. So we'll name our resultant the classic R, and when we add the 600, the negative 718, the negative 496, and the 470 together, we end up with 144 pounds. Make sure it's negative. That makes a big difference here. And for the Y component, we end up with 216 pounds. Now we employ our other formulas to find out the magnitude of R and its direction. So we use our Pythagorean theorem. And we take the square of negative 144 pounds add it to the square of 216 pounds and we end up with 200 60 pounds. So we just enter that right here. And now what is the angle? Well, theta r in this case 
is the inverse tangent of ry over rx but I'm going to put a little asterisk on that if we plug this into our calculator inverse tangent of 216 pounds over negative 144 pounds we get the inverse tangent of negative 1.5 which turns out to be negative 56.3 degrees now that's all very well and good except for the fact that our resultant has a negative x component and a positive y component clearly placing it in the second quadrant here so it would look something like this but our angle is down here indicating something like this. Well, your calculator takes this value here, this negative 1.5, and doesn't know if your y component is negative or if your x component is negative. It simply assumes that it's either in the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant. So you need to use your brain or simply a observation and we have to add 180 degrees if rx is less than zero and guess what rx is less than zero so we add 180 degrees here And we end up with 123.7 degrees. This was an example of how to add four forces in different quadrants using either slopes or angles and their various respective formulae and how to do it very consistently in a table format. Wonderful about, thing about this is that if you instead use say a spreadsheet or simply enough lines on the paper and you had to add another force in here it would be very simple to do so. If you had to use say the graphical method or the uh, triangle method it would be uh, much more complicated. You'd have to do a whole other calculation here. All we have to do is break it down into another set of components add them up again and do the resultant. We also saw what happened when we had a uh, force that had a negative x component. Bringing that back in to find the angle, we had to add the 180 degrees. Well, that's the end of this video, and I hope this helped.